Welcome back, everyone, to the next installment in my Emacs for Writers series. In this video, we're going to learn about Emacs key bindings and how you can use them to increase your speed and writing efficiency. This is also the backbone of how you can send interactive commands into Emacs and get results you want. So stay tuned, we're about to get into it. Before we get started, I'll mention that this educational video series is based on my Emacs for Writers Handbook, which you can download as a PDF or EPUB ebook formatted file. They are in one zip file, so you can download the entire zip and pick which file you want to use. Linked in the description below if you want to follow along with the text. I've also provided links where you can follow me on X and Facebook, where I cross post my video content and uh, other content specifically for those platforms. Uh, there's also a link on my website if you want to join my email newsletter. So thank you. On with the video. Some key concepts we'll be discussing are the key notation system in Emacs, compound key bindings, the global key map, muscle memory development, keyboard efficiency over mouse usage. So Emacs has uh, various keyboard shortcuts, or in Emacs terms, key bindings, as a sort of notation system for running functions that accomplish certain results. And if you're familiar with using Control-C and Control-V on your computer for copying and pasting, you already understand the basics of how these key bindings work in Emacs. But specifically, uh, in Emacs, in the documentation, and other places, you'll see the keys represented this way, and this is important. So capital C represents the control key on your keyboard. M is the meta key, which is usually identified as the alt key on your keyboard. The capital S is shift, and the lowercase s represents the Windows or Mac key that you'll find on various keyboards. So as you're reading through Emacs documentation or watching Emacs videos on YouTube by yours truly and other Emacs guys, you'll know what they're talking about when they mention these various keys, particularly the meta key, because meta is an older terminology that we um, don't see widely used these days outside of Emacs. As you can imagine, key combinations can be used to achieve different effects. Uh, two of the most common functions you'll see are Control X, Control S to save, and Control X, Control F to find a file or open a file in your file system. In both cases, you don't need to release the control key to enter the combination. You can keep the control key pressed down and then type the rest of the combination. So for example, to save a file, I'll press down the control key and then press X followed by S, and that will run the save command. Now you might already be thinking, geez, these key combinations look a little complicated. How am I supposed to remember these? I mean, you need to use three different keys just to save a file. Remember that everything in Emacs can be customized, so you're not forever locked into these. Emacs also has different key maps for different modes. So certain key combination in one mode might do something different in another mode. And key bindings that do the same thing in all modes are part of the global key map. So all modes have access to that same functionality. And you'll find these two, save and find. Uh, those are good examples of commands that will be available in every mode. This is important to understand when you start putting in your own key bindings. You can create your own key bindings for any functionality you want. But when doing so, you want to make sure whether you're creating that key binding for a particular mode or if you're rewriting the global key map. So as you set key bindings for your text modes as a writer, there's no need to set those in programming modes uh, because you wouldn't be using those modes anyway, but it's good to be neat in where you're saving things. And we'll see more about that later. And as I said, some of these key commands can seem complicated or redundant. Many users have opted to use the Vim key commands in Emacs. I'd caution against that because if you ever had to debug Emacs without your Vim keys, you might feel lost uh, even with years of experience. So it's good to invest some time, I think, in my opinion, to learn the default Emacs key bindings, knowing that you can always rewrite them later or use different ones entirely. I can assure you as complicated as the keys seem now with time and muscle memory, you barely notice later. 
The other nice thing about the key bindings is the efficiency gains. Without having to reach over and use your mouse so frequently, you can quickly navigate around a document and make uh, many uh, pretty intuitive edits uh, with just finger twitch speed uh, right at the keyboard. After a few weeks of using Emacs, um, it'll start to feel like a superpower. For now, I'd recommend taking the built-in Emacs tutorial to get used to um, most of the key commands for file operations and navigation. Uh, and to get to the tutorial, all you need to do is type control H and the letter T. And you'll see here, this, uh, this tutorial will guide you through uh, explaining a lot of the basic ins and outs so that you'll be pretty comfortable in Emacs uh, after getting through this. And I'm not even sure you really need to go through the whole thing. I got pretty far, probably halfway through, and I was already pretty confident. I remember I, I did this many years ago. So that's it for this video. In the next unit, we're going to be looking at navigation, how to jump around your document. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. And I'll do my best to answer them. Be sure to like the video and subscribe and share this with someone who you think might get some value out of it as well. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.